chill, like a desert chill. It gets cold at night in the desert. There's just no water vapor in the air to warm things up. So I'm near Tucumcari right now, New Mexico, and the trip has been pretty fun so far. What I really liked about traveling from Oklahoma through Texas, then on to New Mexico, is that the terrain changed so dramatically. It was kind of cool, and it wasn't, like sometimes when I see terrain change, like when I go up a mountain, reach a summit, then descend, when you start to descend, you really see the terrain change really quickly, almost like a light switch. This was a little different. It went from the deciduous trees, the oaks, the maples of western Missouri and eastern Oklahoma to just starting in central Oklahoma, getting more towards western Oklahoma, and then riding through Texas, and then on to New Mexico now where it's desert. It, was, it wasn't like a light switch, like when you descend a mountain. It was more like a, a dimmer switch, slowly changing, but yet noticeable enough. It was kind of cool. I kind of experienced the same thing when I went to school out in Flagstaff, Arizona in my 20s. Flagstaff is 7,000 feet up, so it's temperate. Well, as temperate as Arizona can be. It's not as green as, say, the Midwest where I live. Traveling from Flagstaff to Phoenix, you can really see a dramatic change in the terrain and the types of trees that you see. Well, in Phoenix, it's cacti rather than, you know, the ponderosa pines that you see up in Flagstaff. Today's ride's gonna be fun. There's gonna be one challenging point where I'm gonna face some wind. And the reason I know that is because of the people I meet. So yesterday I met Harry and his wife, Carly, and their dog, Ricky. It was really fun to chat with them. For one reason, it, it was a bit of home. They live near Shawano, Wisconsin, and Harry rides a, an Ultra Classic, and his wife rides a, I don't remember what year, but it's a 883 low, converted to a trike with a 1200 conversion kit. Screaming Eagle, whole nine yards. I mean, this cute couple was HD to the bone. And it was fun to look at that trike. Hopefully I got a picture up now of, of them. You can't really see the bike because it's in their trailer, but you can kind of see the back of it. But Harry had, had a lot of mods done to that bike for his wife. Obviously the trike and the, the board out kit that I just mentioned, but he's got this clutch on there with a fulcrum. I forgot what he called it. Maybe, maybe someone else here can write in the comments below if they know more about this type of clutch. But it had a fulcrum in it, so it made it much easier to pull in that clutch. So it was easier on, on Carly's hands. And he also put, I forgot what model he pulled them off, but he put floorboards on the bike, rear floorboards. So his wife has a different position when she rides, uh, but it's from a completely different bike and he had to fabricate uh, a mound for it. It was just really cool to see that. And he just had a lot of other cool mods to that bike. This trip has been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun riding the 883, as challenging as it's been. And you can see in a previous video how I've had some challenges with the wind in Oklahoma, but especially in Texas. That challenge though has been fun and it's been a lot of fun to ride this bike on this trip because the challenge is what makes it fun. That's where you learn about yourself. That's where I learn about myself. And getting out here and challenging myself with this has been a lot of fun. Seeing the sights, seeing the terrain change, seeing a different environment than what I live in has been a lot of fun too. That's, that's one of the better parts of a trip. Uh, getting back to the bike a little bit, I told Harry that I'm, well, he saw my bike, he's looking at my bike and admiring it. And, he said that I have big cojones. This is a direct quote. He said I have big cojones for riding a bike like this on a trip like this. So I won't, I won't pat myself on the back a whole lot. That's just not my nature. I'm pretty humble, but I will say, I agree with Harry that it does take a lot of balls to ride this bike across country like this. It could be easier. I could take a, a bike design for this that's much more comfortable, that, that handles the, the bumps in the road and <laughs> passing trucks. Although this bike can do it. If you want it to do it, you, it can do it, as I talked about in the previous video. 
But getting back to the people that I'm meeting, I just met Don earlier here too, who's taking a, a photograph of that mountain over there. And I just, it doesn't take much to, to get people to talk to you. All I said to him was, I think I said, uh, oh, that's a, that's a great shot, man. I'm glad you got that shot or something like that. And right after that, he wanted to chat with me. Like he was starting to go on his, on his way. It just took me saying, yeah, you got a great shot there. And then somebody will want to talk to you. It's very welcoming. And obviously the bike itself with all the gear on it is an oddity and, and people are drawn to that. So that helps, but sometimes people just, I'm not saying Don wasn't, wasn't welcoming. The minute I, I mentioned something to him, he was more than willing to talk to me. He probably thought, oh, maybe this dude doesn't want to talk. But it doesn't take much to reach out to people. But that's what I love most about this trip is the people that I'm meeting. And I'm documenting a lot of them if they're willing to let me take their picture. I'm documenting a lot of them on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram right now, I got my Instagram name down below. It's at Great Egret Moto. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. These videos come out much later than the actual experience that I'm having. So to get the most up-to-date experiences that I'm having, that's probably gonna come later in the videos is, is on Instagram. That's where I, I provide a lot of updates. This is the desert. It's the middle of nowhere. We're near Tukumkari. I thought I would drive through Tukumkari. It's this community that you think would not have much in it because it's in the middle of the desert. But it's got a few things that are kind of cool that that keeps that community afloat, that keeps tourists coming. And it fits into that theme that I've been talking about in other videos in this series, how communities have figured out a way to thrive in an environment in which you wouldn't think that they'd be able to. Because Route 66 isn't as logistically and financially as, as, as a behemoth as it once was, and communities need to think of different ideas and different plans to thrive. Tukumkari is one of those communities, so let's go ahead and ride through Tukumkari. On the surface right now, Tukumkari looks like your standard side of the road town where it's got typical hotels, typical gas stations and restaurants. But you can say it's, it's like, like I said, really in the middle of nowhere. And you see in a moment as I get closer to town how this is not your typical desert town or side of the road type of town with typical hotels and typical restaurants. Of course you have the businesses that have closed down. Very similar to what I talked about in episode one where it's really tough to make a go of it in a community where tourism ebbs and flows by the season. Like right now it's after Labor Day so there's not going to be as many tourists here as there are during the summertime when people are traveling along Route 66 like a Kmart that closed down or a, a Big Lots or something. But this ice cream place I passed last night, it's brand new. Or at least under new management. So here we go. So Polygas, the Tukumkari Inn, Route 66 Motel. I mean, they got like an airplane out front. I kind of wish I stayed there last night. That's kind of cool. They have things here that, that draw people in. Make them want to come through here, and stop by, hang out in town, spend money in town to keep these communities thriving. And here's the world famous Blue Swallow Motel. It's kind of a cool place actually. So the only other thing in town is there's a dinosaur museum. So I-40 is near here, so more tourists are gonna be passing by in 
and stop, but you kind of have to come through town, whereas in the past, Route 66 went straight through town, so tourists are not forced to come through town like they once were when Route 66 was in its heyday. So the, the business owners of this town have to come up with a plan to get people like me or other tourists to come through town. That Dinosaur Museum is part of it. Iconic Blue Swallow Hotel. There's a Dinosaur Museum. Like I said, it's just a tiny little town without much here. A closed Ford dealership. So some businesses are definitely going to be challenged by having their businesses in a community like this. But it's just nice to see a lot of businesses like the Blue Swallow that have been around for so long and are still thriving because of, of them utilizing the culture and history of this area to their advantage. Martha, one of my friends who some of you on the channel know from previous videos, she's kind of, she really likes swallows. In fact, she's designing a tattoo around a, a swallow. So I thought I'd stop in here, see if there's a gift shop, and see if I can find something she might like. <laughs> I kind of wish I stayed here last night. I stayed at the KOA last night, but I forgot that it was here. I was just wondering if you wouldn't mind if I just looked around. So, I have a friend who's uh, really likes swallows, and I know this place is pretty iconic. Also, do you mind if I video in here at all? Thank you, I appreciate it. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica, Joe. Very glad to meet you, Jessica. Yeah, you can just email it to me oh. since you're using Sorry, or whatever whatever works for you honestly it doesn't matter thank you so much no problem have a wonderful day you too i'm thank probably gonna close up in here but if you have any questions if you see me outside grab me and i'll be happy to answer i will questions. thank you appreciate your time no problem Come on, Laura. have a good day <laughs> <You too. laughs> that's super cute oh my god just eating the cracker and hanging out oh have a wonderful day. Thanks.